Hey friends, today I'm sharing 10 very popular country rustic DIYs to make this fall season. Guys, my name is Tracy. I'm so glad that you're here and let's get started. Okay guys, first project is using one of these trucks from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm using an older version, but I'm sharing these right here that the Dollar Tree seems to have revamped their stuff, but they're super cute and they're the same size. One of these harvest trucks from the Dollar Tree and I want to get off as much of the lettering and the raised glitter as I could. So I just used my sanding sponge and some elbow grease and just rubbed and rubbed and rubbed until I got uh, the majority of it off. And then I'm going to give it two coats of this plaster color chalk paint. Uh, and then now it's ready for me to embellish it more. I'm just using this granite gray paint and I'm just um, just kind of freehanding just shaping out uh, a window which is going to be the back glass and I gave that two coats of the granite gray paint I also paint on the sides which would be the rear view mirrors and then I go back um, over it with this metallics silver paint and I just give it a little bit on the sides and just kind of highlight it a little bit so it has a glare. I painted the wheels black and then I'm going to use my milk chocolate Americana paint and I'm going to be shading around just to give it more dimension around everything uh, the whole truck and so I dip half of my brush in paint the other half in water and I blend on a paper towel and then I go around the edges of the painted project and that just gives it dimension and depth and just cute. my fan brush and I like to use this to put tre uh, treads for my tires and so I just uh, use just a portion of the brush and just make sure it's not clumped up and then I just kind of go in a zigzag pattern to give some treads on my tires and then on the back glass, I'm just doing more whimsy effect. I'm just adding some lines and they're not perfect. They just are, you know, kind of crooked. Some of them, you know, are a little bit longer than the others. And uh, I just think it just really adds a lot to my finished project. to go back and add a bumper onto my truck. I'm just using the same granite gray paint and just doing the same thing that I did with the back glass by adding some gray paint and then adding some highlights of the metallic silver paint. So then now what I'm doing here is I am just shading around the letters uh, that I hand painted with the uh, black paint and I'm just going around them just to bring some uh, shadowing and some dimension uh, for the little fall letters. It's all in the details for me guys. And I just use my fine Sharpie marker and just go around the entire truck and kind of bringing out, um, you know, the highlights of it. I think it enhances, you know, different parts of it and uh, just makes it look really whimsy and cute. Then I'll uh, do some, 
uh, splattering and I just use my stiff stencil brush and a stick and I just dip it in paint and splatter on the entire truck and then I'll use a different stencil brush and I'll go back and do the white as well. Uh, that way um, it just looks really cute. Now the fun part begins and I can decorate my truck. So I have these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and to get it started I'm just going to start adding some Excelsior. Just going to hot glue a line along the uh, bed of the truck and then I will uh, just start adding my pumpkins and some flowers and some pit berries and some little sunflowers. orange pumpkins are a bit bright for me so I just have my plaster chalk paint and I just dry brush some paint over the pumpkins just to take off uh, you know a bit of the shi uh, shiny brightness and subdue them a bit. I have these stems of wheat that I got from the Dollar Tree and just pulling off parts of the wheat and gluing it on there as well. These wood beads uh, are from Hobby Lobby and they come in nine in a pack. They didn't have a size on them, so I was unable to tell you what they are. But what I did is I wanted eight beads for my tr uh, truck hanger and I just put four on each side. I just used jute to um, you know, thread them on and then secure them on my truck. So then now I'm going to make a bow and my ribbons are cut at six inches and I dovetailed the ends of them and I'm just going to, you know, just make a, just a simple bow to attach to the top of the door hanger. First I tied the bow with jute, but I couldn't get it tight enough, so I went back to my handy Chanel stem and that helped me gather it in the center and get it really tight. And then I'll just attach it, just twist it on that string and have it look, uh, you know, in the middle at the top just to hang it for this truck door hanger. Have you ever had a project and you think, oh, this is not going to take me long at all, and then it takes you much longer than what you anticipate it will? Mm -hmm. Yeah, th that is this project. Uh, so let me show you what I did to create this and also what I did when my painting did not turn out the way that I pictured it and what I did to fix it so that my project was not scrapped. 
Okay, here are some of the supplies I'm using. The mason jar is from Dollar Tree, as well as these flowers. I'm also adding two of these picks from the Walmart Floral. To give um, my lid a bit more definition, I am just adding strips of hot glue to the lid. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna go over it with this gray granite paint and let that dry. I'm gonna give it two coats because that gives a pretty good coverage. And if you freak out by glitter, I'm gonna forewarn you, but I am adding some of this Sterling Color Martha Stewart Fine Glitter. It is my favorite glitter. I am not bothered by any glitter, but I know that a lot of people are. And uh, I just added that to the top of my lid to give it a little more, you know, pizzazz. And uh, just dried that using my heat gun. Now I'm going to add some definition to the end of my or the edges of my project by adding just a bit of antiquing wax and then I just go along the edges and then I'm also adding a bit to the rim of the mason jar just to give it a more realistic look. Using my fine Sharpie marker, I just doodle around the edges because that's what I like to do for my projects, just to give them a little more character and definition. And I should have known when I was doodling up this and some of the antiquing on the edges was kind of not dry yet. And uh, I should have, you know, that should have been the first clue for me to say, okay, try you need to uh, rethink this only because the Dollar Tree signs are chipboard and it's printed paper that is an overlay on the boards and so therefore it's not porous and it doesn't accept um, some of, of the products that we use and um, so anyway you know I had mentioned at the beginning of the video that I you know had a little boo-boo and I was going to show you how I fixed that so that's what I'm kind of showing you here I fully intended when I started this project was to you know have this hello fall just kind of adding a bit of you know just shading and definition to it and so then when I went to varnish and or put a sealer on my project that's when I messed up Usually when I put black Sharpie marker and paint and shading on my projects, I have no problem, but this particular sign I did, and it's just because the of the slick paper that the Dollar Tree signs have on top of them uh, that my Hello Fall kind of smeared. So this project is just taking me a little bit longer because I'm gonna have to paint a sign and uh, or scrap this project because you know I don't like it when that little hello fall was smeared anyway so let me show you how I painted the sign and how I fixed my little mistake okay I'm just painting a little sign here I have a wood slat I get these over in the unfinished wood section over there at the Walmart craft section and just using my paintbrush I'm just painting up my signs the way I like to do it, just giving it a border, giving it some background, and then I will take uh, my smaller brush and paint Hello Fall. Um, I'm a self-taught painter. I say that humbly. Um, it is some God-given talent, and uh, I want to give all the credit and glory to him because I have had many, many trials and errors of trying to figure out how to paint, and for years, guys I uh, my husband and I did some craft shows and I did actual personalization and did a lot of individual projects so I was determined to figure out how to paint with a paintbrush and so one of my things is to doodle up with little dots on the letters that's what I like to do for my projects I know that's not everybody's style but you know that's what I like so I am just taking the end of my paintbrush and just giving it some little dots and then I like to 
to highlight my little edges. I love, I love the country. This is just very country to me. And uh, that's just my projects and what I like to do here on my channel. So I appreciate all of your sweet kind support. And I just love it that there are so many of you country girls at heart still around. Uh, anyway, so I'm just shading up my little sign here and then I will finish it up and add it to my little project. Okay, I'm going to add a wire hanger to my mason jar before I put the flowers on. Now this wire is uh, a, a thicker wire that I got at a local hardware store and I like to use this thicker wire when I have projects like this that I want to hang up, hang signs on and stuff like that. And then uh, to make those little curly cues, I just take a dowel or you can take a pencil, the end of a paintbrush, something like that and just twist it around just giving it little curly cues and then to attach the you know get the little curls at the bottom I just uh, just curl that and then just the edge of the wire I always take my needle nose pliers and flip the edges turn them over so that they're not sharp and they won't cut me or someone else Okay, I want to make my flowers look like they're coming out of the mason jar. So I have these flowers from the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to add those two picks in from Walmart. And I'm just trying to figure out how to get my flowers attached. Now I'm not saying that this is the perfect way, but this is the best way that I knew how to do it. I just um, added those flowers on the back and then I had some duct tape. It just happens to have these cute little candy corn on there. Anyway, so I just, duct tape the flowers to the bag and then to cover it up I just have some of this um, burlap that I've had in my stash for quite a while and I said well you know you should use it and uh, it's just kind of a sheet of it and I'm just hot gluing it to the back so that it looks like they're uh, the little flowers are in a pocket. Okay, now I have this little hello that I need to cover up. So I just have some Spanish moss, just gonna hot glue that there to the front and it just looks like it is all meant to be. And uh, then now I'm gonna work on my bow and thank you for your very sweet comments on uh, how most of you like the way that I make my bows. I appreciate that. The buffalo check I got at Habelabe. The burlap is from the Dollar Tree and the burlap with the red stripe is also from Hobby Lobby. And uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm using my little tiny attacher, my little stapler, and that is helping me just by putting a small little staple in the center so that I can layer my bow. And then I'll use my pipe cleaner to uh, help me, you know, kind of twist it all together and then I'll fluff it up because that is very important. So then now here I have added some raffia because a country mason jar project is not complete in my eyes without some raffia. These three pumpkins are from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to quickly share how I do my pumpkins. So anyway, what I do is I just, you know, take my paper and I turn my little pumpkin over, trace it out. I've um, learned that if I put a, an X 
on like the left side. Uh, it helps me remember where my pumpkin should go or where my paper should go on my pumpkin. So that's been a great help. Now what I'm showing you here is I want to um, add some dimension to my pumpkin. So I am adding some hot glue. It's giving some lumps and bumps and some ridges. And so I am going to be doing that for each of the pumpkins so that when I mod podge the paper on the pumpkin and it dries then I can go back over and distress it and it's going to give me a great look. I'm just using my scraping tool and my little score to uh, try to help get all the paper down. Now I don't put a layer of Mod Podge on top of the paper until the bottom layer completely dries. That helps prevent the bubble. So there's a little crafting tip for you. I'm just going to add some shading to my pumpkin to enhance uh, the ridges. And I use my milk chocolate brown paint and I just dip half of my brush in the paint, half in clean water, blend it on the little paper towel, and then I just go around the pumpkin. Next, uh, once that's completely dry, then I take my 60 grit coarse sandpaper and I'm going around each of the pumpkins to uh, distress it from that, um, you know, from where the hot glue, you know, I have it underneath that paper and I love that little look. And so then now to give it even more dimension, I'm going to use some puffy paint and just give it some doodles and some squiggles. And this is what I like to do for my project. You don't need to use, you know, this step or do this step, but I like to do this. I use the white on the small and the orange pumpkin and then slick black on the large pumpkin. Using this fall block, from the Dollar Tree. I just painted uh, off-white uh, over the gather, just the top of it. Then I'm going to add some lines using this antique white paint um, and my fan paintbrush. I will have my favorite paintbrushes linked below because I do get questions about those. You can get these brushes anywhere or uh, like fan brushes or paint brushes, but these are just my personal preference. And then uh, I'm using some black ceramic coat paint with my number two flat brush for my lettering and um, you know it has taken me many years I have had lots of trial and error of you know I was determined to learn how to paint and it is I have mentioned this in other videos but I'm, I'm strongly uh, it is a God-given talent and I have just tried over and over it was my desire to learn how to paint with the paintbrush and I owe all of the credit um, to God because he has allowed me to you know learn how to do this without having to take a an expensive painting class but anyway I have messed up many projects and uh I just paint over it and then start again. And then now I am doing some happy dots. I had a viewer uh, leave a comment and say, say those are happy dots. So that's what I'm going to be referring to them from now on. Yes, they make me so happy and uh, right up there with pit berries. <laughs> anyway, these little dots make me so happy and it's just part of my country crafting, country creations. And so then now I'm just finishing up everything. I will let that dry then I will go back in and I will do some shading with my Americana milk chocolate paint. I like the look that it gives my projects. Then I will pull out my fine Sharpie marker because I love to doodle on my projects. It's just part of who I am. So thank you for loving me where I'm at with these little doodles. To make the pickets for my fence, I am using these five gallon paint sticks that I picked up from Lowe's. I'm using my little 12 inch miter box saw with 14 inch back saw to create my little pickets. Okay, so this is the size that I'm using uh, or that I need for my little project. And uh, so I just am lining it up and then I have a pencil and then I am just kind of marking where the um, 
you know, where the little V or the like the little picket will be. And so then what I find works best for me, I have just this shelf liner to kind of help with the movement of my little saw. So I just line it up along there and then you just place it right in here. This little miter box and saw works great because um, I didn't want to ask my husband to go out to his workshop and cut them off. I wanted to do them myself. But if you have a jigsaw or a table saw or something like that, uh, that might be a little bit faster. And I just do the same thing for the straight boards uh, that is going to hold my fence together. Then using some 60 grit coarse sandpaper, I am just going to sand off the edges. And then I will use my tack cloth to get off any of the little dust particles. I just painted my little pickets brown. Once they were dry, I distressed them by exposing a bit of the wood using my 60 grit sandpaper. So then now I'm taking my T ruler and I am just lining them up. I want enough space so that I can glue my welcome to my patch sign. I'm not being too precise. I just kind of eyeball it um, to glue my sign on there and the little pickets to hold the fence. I'm using Using my uh, rapid fuse glue as well as hot glue and that just keeps my little fence together as you can see I love to use my little clips to hold my things together so that they give a good bond For the stems of my pumpkins, on these two, I use this thicker jute. And then for the orange one, I just use some burlap from the Dollar Tree. I usually cut it in half and wrap it around the stem. That works better for me. Now I want to figure out how I'm going to put my pumpkins. So I kind of have them placed here. This large one this uh, thankful and blessed it kind of has this little indention right here that'll sit right in that little curve and so I'm going to use that to my advantage so I'm just putting my um, pumpkin on the stand close like lining it up here and then this one's going to go right here so then I will just glue everything together I just used some of my rapid fuse and some hot glue to glue these pumpkins together. Uh, and then I put my little clamps on there to hold for a few minutes so that they really set up. Once I started working with the pumpkins, I realized that I needed to glue them to the fence so everything was together. So that middle pumpkin is uh, not flush with the front part. It's uh, closer to the back. I added some Spanish moss to the a little sign to kind of cover the holes and have a place for my little flowers to attach to. Now I added these little orange and yellow flowers. They are from the Dollar Tree. And then I also added some hydrangeas. I just pulled them off of the little bush and just glued them onto the little um, lower part of my little sign. Then I added some pit berries. I know I put these on my last year DIY rustic pumpkins, but I just love pit berries. I love the way that they look on this little project. Uh, um, so it, you know, it's just definitely uh, a personal preference of something that you like. Here are the ribbons I'm going to use for my bows. Um, the majority of it is from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. Um, here is one of the bundles I put together. I'm using some green ivy um, just to give it a little bit more texture and dimension. And I just um, like to, you know, just add just different little textures and colors to my little projects. Now to start my bows, I cut my ribbon about um, eight, nine, or 10 inches. It depends on how long I want that actual tail. So I'm just cutting those off here. I'm making um, the finishing edge by making a dovetail and then I just layer them on top of each other because I like that look the way that it gives that.
This ribbon is from Hobby Lobby. I just cut that off about nine inches and just dovetail the ends of that and then just layer my little bow on top of each other. The window pane is also from Hobby Lobby. I got that years ago, uh, but you can get it at different places. Then I'm going to add some wire. This green wire I did get at the, um, I think it was at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to look for it on Amazon because I know I'm going to get asked about that. I'm just going to twist the, uh, it around the dowel, just making some little curly cues and just layering it on my little bows. So I'm just layering all of the ribbons here, just layering, layering them on top of each other. And then I add some pit berries in there for some dimension and texture. And it just really ties the uh, country project together. The supplies that I used is a witch hat, four rolls of five inch deco mesh, some burlap, some raffia, some Chanel stems, some berries, and some ribbons, as well as a hot glue gun and hot glue sticks. So let me show you how I put all of this together. I'm using my wire cutters to cut off all of those little nubs that keep the tinsel on the witch hat. So I'm just showing you here how just by removing the nubs, this is how it looks. First, I'm going to put some raffia at the very tip of my hat. And uh, after, af honestly, after I got the hat done, I didn't need to do this before. I could have tied this on afterwards. So there, it's a choice. You can put it on before like I did, or you can wait till the end and then just add it then but I just tied it through the little opening there and then I made a knot. I'm just using some six inch burlap. Now the burlap I got from Walmart and uh, I am just twisting that around the top. I'm just kind of figuring out how I can get this adhered. So I'm going to use my glue gun. I'm very careful not to glue the uh, little plastic frame because I'm sure that it will break. So I glue the burlap to itself. And so then I'm gonna uh, pull that as tight as I can. And uh, then I will just continue to wrap the burlap around the wreath and I mean around the uh, witch hat. And then I am turning this into a scarecrow hat. So uh, I'm going to continue to wrap the burlap around and then every once in a while I will uh, give a dot of hot glue so that the burlap kind of stays in place. Now, um, to cut my mesh, I just have my mat and a rotary cutter. I'm cutting the mesh, the length at 12 inches. 
So that is going to be the length of my mesh. And so I am just cutting all of them at one time. But if you're not comfortable doing that, you can cut them one by one or just cut two colors at a time. Now to make my bundles, um, I guess I'm doing like a spiral or a tube technique. I'm not quite sure. Everyone calls it something different. So um, I have my four colors of mesh cut and then I have uh, some raffia. So I'm just rolling these up. I kind of let the mesh kind of, you know, because it, it's on a roll, it just kind of curls itself and I just kind of take it in my fingers and just kind of, you know, go with it and just make a spiral. And then I um, put the raffia on there as well. And that is what I'm going to tie onto my scarecrow hat. So I just tie them directly to the frame uh, with those Chanel stems. At first I had made a bundle without the raffia, but then I learned that I do want the raffia in there. So it's, it's actu actually an option. You can have each bundle with raffia or you can alternate them. So, you know, it just depends on how much raffia you want your scarecrow hat to have. I'll just continue to fill the entire bottom brim of the hat with those bundles. Now for the top of my hat, what I did is I made one of my rustic bows. I did show that in a recent video, so I will link to that up in the top as well as the bottom if you would like to check out how I make my rustic bows. I made it the same way that I showed it there in that video. So then now I'm just going to uh, tie this around that raffia um, as tight as I I can because I want that raffia to kind of stick up and not be all wonky so I'm just uh, twisting that rustic bow around the raffia and getting it as tight as I can so that it will stick up. Now I'm just going to add some berries that I got from the Dollar Tree. Uh, I'm just going to be adding those sporadically in my little scarecrow hat, just hot gluing those in different places. finish it off I added a couple of patches of homespun fabric to the top of the hat and I just love this little rustic scarecrow uh, I just love it so much and I hope that you do too scarecrows right. cute scarecrows scream fall to me and so I decided to make another scarecrow now what I've done is I've taken some uh, pieces of just board that I had on hand now the bigger board that I'm going to make the scarecrow face came from Dollar Tree and the this one that I'm working with now that pack came from Hobby Lobby and so I wanted to make that as part of the brim but I wanted that jagged edge on the end and so I'm just kind of taking my scissors and just going back and forth I wasn't thinking I should have used my box blade to kind of helped me help me uh, you know jag this up a bit more 
but you know, it was already too late and I've already done it. And so that is okay. So, uh, the board itself is too wide. So I trim that down. Uh, just measure that out and use my box blade, just, you know, scoring it back and forth and back and forth until I get the uh, board to break in half. For my scarecrow hat, I am using the color curry, which is a Waverly chalk paint. That was just the gold color that I had on hand and wanted to use that. So I also paint the brim of the hat, that same curry color. Now for the face, I'm using the Waverly chalk paint color in uh, cashew is the color that I'm using. I've kind of got grown fond to this. I love it uh, for my scarecrow face and gave it a couple of coats of that. All right, so now I'm using a, a half inch flat paintbrush. Actually, this is more of a fourth of an inch flat paintbrush. And so I'm going to do some shading. I left this in here, guys, to show you that, um, first of all, I am human and I do make mistakes as far as when I'm painting uh, and I'm shading. Some of it doesn't come out too, too good. And even though I, you know, dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water, and then I blend on a paper towel, sometimes it comes out a little, you know, too thick. And so then I just go back, use some of that paint and just kind of soften that up a bit because that black was just a little bit too too dark for me. All right, so then for the uh, shading of the brown around the scarecrow's face, I'm using the color milk chocolate as well as, uh, you know, some clean water. Then I go around and, you know, around the edges of it and I was just kind of having struggling with my shading this day when I was filming this. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to, you know, uh, sugarcoat it or anything. But anyway, so I share this with you only because I want to encourage anyone who wants to paint like this. Uh, you know, you're going to mess up. You know, I mess up. I've been doing this for, you know, 25 years. And so I just, you know, just go on and just figure out how I can correct my mistakes. So for my nose, I didn't have a triangle. So I just used a craft stick and cut that down uh, to a triangle to the size that I wanted. Then I gave it a coat of uh, burnt orange Americana paint uh, for my nose. Now for the cheeks, I like the more rectangle up and down cheeks. And I just use my uh, stenciling brush and some coral color paint, just stippling that on to get the darkness of the, uh, you know, the kind that I like. So to make a little bit more whimsy face, I use my uh, detailing brush. Now I get asked about this, about my liner brushes. Uh, my liner brushes or the key to a liner brush is get one that is very thin, take out some bristles, uh, something that, you know, you only has a few bristles because then that is, you know, makes it kind of thin so that you can make little lines like this. All right. So now I've done my eyes and I like the more almond shaped eyes as far. I like, them, um, you know, kind of touching at the top. Everyone's a little bit different. Uh, you know, you can get different, uh, patterns and different, uh, templates online. If you would like to, you know, figure out how to do a uh, little face like this. Okay, so then I use that little detailing brush just to make some eyelashes. And I did make some eyebrows, but I end up going back later in covering those up because my hat brim was going to cover those up. And so I'm like, eh, shouldn't even waste my time. All right, so for the small little scarecrow mouth, I just drew it out with a pencil, then just going back over it, just making it a little darker with my fine sharpie marker and then I'll just use that little detailing brush just to go and put some little stitch marks in there I made just some little X's on this uh, this time uh, but that's what I did just to bring the little character or the little snow uh, not snowman <laughs> I guess I got snowman on the brain, the little scarecrow, just to bring him to life. All right, so then I like to add a bit of uh, uh, white to the eyes just to bring them to life and give them a little bit of character. And depending on where I put my white of the eyes will kind of depend on which direction or which way he is looking. So then I just use the end of a paintbrush and some of that milk chocolate brown paint just to give a uh, some freckles for my my scarecrow. All right, to uh, hand letter the happy harvest, what I use is a 
Uh, number two uh, flat paintbrush and this is in that uh, pack of my favorite paintbrushes. Now um, what I do is air draw it just to make sure that I you know have enough space and I'm using the color of paint uh, buttermilk which is an Americana paint but I just wanted a more off-white paint and so I just hand letter this and doing my happy dots. Now uh, I had forgotten that I wanted to uh, put some uh, maroon lines through it and so I go back later and add just some maroon lines you know just to tie in all the plaid pattern for my scarecrow. <laughs> make the plaid part of the hat I'm using the color Napa red and the flat paintbrush I'm using is out of the, my favorite paintbrushes uh, the number eight flat paintbrush that's the one that I'm using for this uh, to make this plaid pattern and so you know I'm just freehanding this just to make some stripes and so I'll show you in just a minute you know I thought I had it measured out the way that I wanted it to but uh, it was just going to be a little bit too close and so it's okay because it's, the beauty is in the details and we just figure out what works best for us and how we can hide our mistakes and so uh, I just continue to you know put my stripes like that I actually should have put those I measured those a little bit different uh, because once I measured like figured out where I needed my brim to go it was not it was only going to show that one uh, stripe at the top you know going uh, across the top and I wanted two to show all right so then to add some of the off-white color I'm just using my liner brush and just put that in there uh, you know in between just to you know give it the plaid pattern all right so this is where I was talking about I had forgotten that I wanted to put in a little bit of that maroon color or the Napa red and so I just use my detailing brush just to go back through and just add some of the uh, red maroon stripes just to tie everything in together all right so then um, now I'm just taking that liner brush and just going in each of the uh, bubbles uh, or the happy dots just to you know bring them out to life and you know just bring them out I guess is what I'm trying to say and just give them some character all right I'm using my fine sharpie marker to add some doodling and I love this because it just really uh, feel that or I feel that it just brings my projects to life you know as I say you hear me say this all the time the beauty is in the details the shading the uh, black sharpie marker just everything just brings everything out to life and so I like to use a fine tip sharpie marker as well as an ultra fine uh, tip sharpie marker one is a little bit thinner and so that gives me the really thin lines that I like and so then of course I am going to paint splatter everything and I will do that just using my uh, stencil brush as well as a stick and then I run the stick over the bristles toward my body uh, then that just projects the paint onto the um, you know to the project and so I always you know I get questions about that is you know how do you do this what can you use can you use a toothbrush can you you know an old toothbrush can you use your fingers absolutely whatever works for you is great and so I'll just continue uh, to add some doodling and some shading and some squiggles to my project
Once my paint and everything was completely dry, I take my sanding sponge and just run it over uh, the painted parts and just to expose a bit of the wood and just kind of take the brightness off of the uh, painted part of the scarecrow hat because I wanted it a little bit more muted. And then I just use my uh, black fine point sharpie marker just to go around each of the letters just to give them a little bit of character and just to bring them out. For uh, hair for my scarecrow, I'm using some raffia and I like to use the raffia from Walmart. And so for this uh, small scarecrow, when I'm, you know, just kind of laying some raffia out and I just use clips to help me along. And so I tie it off at the top and then just, I don't stress about, um, you know, what it looks like before I I'm going to give it a haircut. And so I just tie it off, you know, at the top so that it kind of stays halfway together. And then I just glue that on there like that. Now, you know, for your scarecrow, there's so many different ways, you know, or so many different things that you can use, um, or ways that, you know, people make hair and that kind of thing. But this is just what works for me. I just tie off different pieces and just glue them on, uh, just making sure that everything you know, kind of sticks out, uh, sticks out from the hat that looks like it's sticking out from the hat and it's very rustic and very country and just, you know, just looks really scarecrowy. <laughs> That's not even a word. Uh, anyway, so to make sure that everything is, uh, is secure, I use E6000 as well as hot glue to glue that brim on there. And so then the way that I had painted it, yeah, it was already going to cover up my eyebrows. So I, that's why I didn't even worry about any eyebrows. And so then now I'm, you know, give it a little haircut and my little scarecrow is so cute. So now, what I did with this cute scarecrow, Scarecrow is make this fall fence with the fall lettering, added some pit berries and just made it up really cute. I use this as a wreath attachment on one of my country style wreaths. Uh, I will leave a link for the second part of the video of how I created this It's Fall Y'all fence. All right, y'all check that out if you want to see how I did that. This pumpkin trio is so, it was so fun to create and I pull it out every single year and use it. It is just super easy and just so versatile. Now these pumpkin boxes came from the Dollar Tree. I'm using three of them. I gave them a coat of this Canyon Orange acrylic paint. I painted both sides, inside and outside, because I'm gonna make this, uh, you know, reversible so that you can see it from both sides. So then um, once I finish painting that, then I'm going to add some shading and do the details. That's what I always say, guys, the beauty is in the details. And especially for me, I love to shade my projects with my flat paintbrush. I dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water. I blend on a paper towel, then I go around the edges just to give it some shading. And then it just really adds some depth and depth definition, especially for my painted projects. And then uh, I will add some squiggles. I really, like I say, the beauty is in the details. I say that all of the time because when you just add and highlight and add some uh, paint splatters, when you add some squiggles like this, it just really, really makes your painted project pop. And so I just use my little tiny kind of liner brush. This one has been with me for a few years, but I have shared um, just an idea with friends that want to do that. If you don't have one, get a liner brush and pull out some of the bristles because that little liner brush has been with me for a long time. I add some uh, paint splatters just with my stiff brush and a stick. I add black first, then I go back over it with some off-white or some, you know, antique white. And then uh, once 
once all of my paint is dry, then I will take my fine Sharpie marker just to give it a little bit of definition and more doodling. Then once all of that is dry, then I give it a coat of uh, just sealer that favorite, uh, my favorite sealer, which is uh, the you know, Delta Ceram Coat Sealer that is listed in my Amazon shop. Most of my favorite project products are listed in my Amazon shop. Okay, so then um, now I'm going to, you know, start adding some of the embellishments to my pumpkins. I'm adding some of that burlap. I love it. It looks all frayed and everything. Um, what I'm showing you here, this is a little mask tool and also some pink fingertips that you can get from the Dollar Tree. That just helps helps prevent our fingers from getting burned from the hot glue. So I just cut off the burlap, twist that around the stem and make the stems look really cute and rustic and very country. I just um, kind of slipped the pumpkins together where they kind of, if like they fit like a puzzle, that's just what it, I was just kind of thinking when I was doing it. And then I just hot glued those down so that they would all stay together. And then I'm going to use this uh, Pitberry Garland. This is from the Dollar Tree. Just oh so cute and speaks to my heart. And so I'm just cutting off pieces of that, just twisting it around my finger and uh, just adding it to the pumpkin uh, to kind of simulate some tendrils for each of the pumpkins. This next part is totally optional. Honestly, if I had this to do over again, I would leave these off because uh, a lot of friends have remade this and they didn't add it. And it just looks really cute. But I had these Hello Autumn uh, blocks that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just wanted to use them and add a sign to my uh, trios. So what I did is I just cut them all apart. Um, actually, I should have used my box blade that would have cut a little bit better. And then what I did is I kind of, you know, added some distressing to it, some, you know, paint splatters just to make it a bit more rustic and, uh, you know, just make a little, uh, really country cute. So a country rustic project wouldn't be complete without some Excelsior. I love the fine one um, that I can get at different craft stores. I just kind of put that in there. And then I have all of these fun for a uh, flower florals that I got from either Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree just kind of stick those in there and this is so cute it is you know two-sided so you can see uh, it all on both sides as I mentioned at the beginning of this segment a lot of friends have made these over the years they have didn't put the signs on some of them did and they look just fine but it's just really cute that you can create these for your table or just to sit around and just to have it for some fall decor. Here are some of the supplies I'm using in this cute Scarecrow Girl project. Now for her body, I am using this wood tag I got from Hobby Lobby. I picked it up during their 75% off sale. I paid $3.74 and I decided to use this one because it was a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than this one from the Dollar Tree. Uh, but I wanted to just share that for this an option, this is the same size. I as this one that I got from Hobby Lobby uh, but it's just a personal preference but I just wanted to give you an option if it's something that you would like to you know recreate now for the face I'm using this snowman cutout this also came from the Dollar Tree and what I did is I took off the brim and the scarf the nose I just used my heat tool it was a little difficult to get off I don't know if it was just this particular one but yeah I had to kind of push and pull and that kind of thing and then uh, so I'm not going to 
going to be using the scarf or the nose. Uh, and then for her uh, for her arms, I'm going to be using two of these wood hanging decor slats that I got from the Dollar Tree in the uh, Crafter Square section. I'm going to be making some arms out of that. Now for the bottom, um, what I'm going to be using uh, are, I don't know if I'm going to be using all of the jeans are just part of the jeans, but I picked up these jeans at a thrift store for $1. And, um, you know, I'm choosing to use them. I got them from a thrift store. And so they're like a kid size. They're Wranglers and they're so cute. I just love them. Now for like the shirt uh, for my girl, I have this homespun fabric. And I recently placed an order with jubileefabric.com and I got some really cute uh, patterns in and I want to use it in today's projects. Now for the dry sign, what I did is I took off that jute hanger. And so then what I'm going to do is give it a coat of cashew chalk paint and uh, let that dry. I also am going to be painting the face of my scarecrow girl, the same cashew chalk paint uh, color and, you know, then let that dry. Now for my homespun fabric, what I'm going to do is um, I have this fat quarter I had placed an order with Jubilee fabric and ordered uh, several different designs. And so it's only a quarter of a yard. Uh, and so I had to be creative in making sure that I got all of my um, fabric, you know, because I needed it for the shirt and for her uh, arms. And of course I have tons of other fabric, but you know, no, I wanted to use this one <laughs> anyway. So here guys, what I'm doing is to make the arms, I want it to have a little bit of cushion. And, uh, if I would have thought about it, I would have tea stained the socks, but I don't, you don't really see them anyway. But what I'm doing is these are just, um, uh, like socks. I just needed something for my arm to get a little bit of, um, a cushion, a little stuffing and for everything to, you know, kind of hold it together. And so I just have one of those socks. I just put on each arm and then kind of, uh, what I just stuff with is like pillow stuffing or, you know, fabric fill. And so then that's what I did is I just, you know, put that sock on there just like that. And then with that homespun fabric, I just wrapped it around, just hot glued everything in place for the, uh, raffia. I just, you know, made small sections of, uh, just little, I just cut little raffia off and then I just worked in sections and just kind of glued as I went, took my time and everything just looks really cute. And this is going to be her arms, you know, for her body. So for her shirt, I am, you know, just kind of positioning these extra pieces of the homespun fabric there. Now these, uh, like, they're each ripped from when I did them on the arm. So I want to keep those tattered edges, you know, like where it looks like she has that shirt. And so these wood buttons, the button, I think I got a, a thing of buttons at Hobby Lobby that were like more neutral color browns, natural, that kind of thing anyway. And so then I just put them in one of those little plastic containers from the Dollar Tree. And so I'm going to be using those for little buttons for the front of her shirt. Now to uh, adhere the uh, homespun fabric to my uh, to my board I'm just using Mod Podge and so uh, just you know giving it some a wet Mod Podge underneath as well as on top so that everything is nice and secure and everything is glued down all right so then for her nose I am uh, I, what I did is I just drew out a, a triangle out of foam board and I'm just giving it a coat of burnt orange paint and that is Americana paint and then um, first I was going to be adding some burlap for a hat but then I decided to just paint the hat and the brim and that kind of thing and so to make the face I'm doing what I usually do for my faces is just draw it out in pencil then I'll go back and add some black marker and as you could see my black sharpie marker I had to go ahead and throw that one in the trash because it was not it was like on its last leg it was not it wasn't very you know had a lot of color to it so um, what I did then I went back with black paint 
and just filled those in. All right, so then here for her cheeks, what I'm using is just coral paint and a uh, wispy brush that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now, as you could see, uh, if you're watching me paint, I got a little paint on that one cheek. And so I just went back and corrected it with just some cashew paint, let that dry. And so then now I'm just going to go ahead and shade everything um, with my favorite way of shading. If this is your first time of watching, um, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for being here. I do love to share uh, just hand painting. I love to share, you know, just different things that I like to do. I like to do all kinds of crafts. And so I like to share hand painting, wreaths, um, home decor and all that kind of thing. And I do like to create cute little whimsical faces for my characters. I do have a video, um, that I've created. I really need to be updating that because I have a lot more character faces that I need to add to that video anyway. So I will leave a link for that if you would like to check that out. Uh, and so what I'm doing here is I'm just continuing to, paint the faces, but I'll be honest with you because I try to be honest with my community. I was having a really off day this day when I was painting this, I was not happy with her face and I end up going, having to go back and add, uh, some paint to where I just kind of got ahead of myself, didn't let it dry. So it kind of smeared and I was not happy with the eyelashes. So I end up going back and, uh, giving that some cashew paint, painting over those, and then just using a um, ultra fine Sharpie marker just to draw her eyelashes because I tried several times. I was not happy with it. So I'm just being honest with you, even as many times as I or many things that I have painted, each day is a new day and we kind of mess up and we just go on with that. So here, what I'm doing here is drawing out a mouth. And at first I drew it out with a pencil. Then I'm just going back with a different Sharpie marker because this one you can see is much better. And so I'm just kind of going and kind of filling in to make it a little bit thicker where I want it. And then I'll go back with just a little thin liner brush and just fill it in with some paint and just make everything look really nice. And here from this angle, her face, her eyelashes didn't look too bad, but I just really wasn't happy with them. They were as wispy as I like them. Um, and so you can see here, I just went ahead and painted over them and then anyway, it is what it is. I'm just kind of sharing and just, I just want to encourage my community, you know, that it's just paint. You can paint over it. And I leave all of this in here, guys, to share that no matter, I've been painting for uh, nearly 30 years and I still am not happy with some of my painting sometimes. And so I know that the ultra fine Sharpie marker doesn't quite show up as well as the black paint, but it does show up better in person. All right. So then for her hat, what I did is I have some burlap acrylic paint and I just painted it uh, in a couple of coats of that. Then now I'm taking a flat paintbrush and I'm going to be making the stripes and I just kind of take my time and just, um, you know, kind of just make the stripes one way, then I'll go back the other way. And then uh, I usually leave the brim last because I want to match up my stripes. And so then I'll go ahead and do the brim and then make sure that everything is um, dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some of the cashew paint. I'm going to be using my fan brush just to give it a little bit of the wispiness. Uh, my projects are very whimsical, uh, very country cute. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're new here, welcome into my community. Those of you that have been with me, thank you so much because I really do appreciate you. I 
I add a little bit of black shading to the hat as well as the brim and then kind of on the other you know uh, on one side of the stripes just to give some depth and dimension for my projects I'm also going to be adding some uh, uh, stitching marks to her mouth because you know a scarecrow usually has some stitch marks in her mouth so I'm just using my little liner brush to do that I'm also going to use my ultra fine sharpie marker just to go around and uh, kind of bring out my whole project this is something that I like to do just to you know give some squiggles doodles and squiggles is usually what I call it and as I mentioned the beauty is in the details I say that a lot all of the time because you know I put a lot of a lot of thought and time into my projects and so I am so grateful that you are here and it just blesses my heart when someone says that they like my style of crafting they're here for that and they share their creations your creations of what you've created if something that you've picked up from me that really blesses my heart so um, now what I'm going to do is add some black paint splatters to my project because I do love that look of course that's totally optional if that's not something that you like but I love my my doodling and my black paint splatters so what I did is just add a little bit of glue to the nose just to uh you know adhere it to the face then what I'm doing now is adding some raffia and then I just kind of position it off and then to glue the brim of her hat I am just using a combination of E6000 as well as hot glue I don't mix the two I just make sure that they are you know positioned on the back of there and then just kind of hold that there together to uh, add a little interest to the sleeves I'm going to just tie some raffia around there or like where the cuff of the sleeve would be and one thing that I want to mention is I like to uh, use some of these very thin they're uh, they're actually clear for me little rubber bands that I get in a pack at Dollar Tree and that helps I just kind of uh, you know just kind of gather my raffia and it really helps in little projects like this and so then once I get this done then what I'm going to do is just pick out the buttons that I want I'm going to add buttons to the shirt and then also a couple for her sleeves now what I decided to do is I was thinking okay girl how are you going to store this at the end of the season <laughs> okay and so uh what I decided to do is just for the arms as well as the head I'm just going to uh, buy some velcro I would have shared that but I didn't have any velcro on hand I didn't think about it I, actually when I first thought about this project I was just going to make a sitter just the the body but then when I found these jeans I'm like oh I can use those for her you know for the scarecrow for the legs and I'm like oh my goodness so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to velcro the arms and the head onto her body and that way at the end of the season I can you know just take those off and then the uh, jeans I'm just gonna like fold underneath her because you know they're not stuffed or anything like that and so that's gonna make storage a lot easier for me than having a big you know big thing in order to store and so yeah I'm just kind of was thinking about that all right so then now what I'm gonna do is I'm taking another one of those rubber bands because I'm going to be making a braid for her hair so I just uh, use one of those rubber bands from the Dollar Tree and then I just have some tape here that I just tape it to my table because I'm going to braid her hair or her raffia hair <laughs> and so uh, you know I just kind of I've been braiding for many many years and so um, I'm just doing just a simple braid and then I will just add another rubber band you know to the bottom I actually got it a little bit longer on this side than the other side so I end up taking some of that off and just making it a little bit easier rubber bands clamps tape all of that stuff is what I use and I hope that you are enjoying seeing this project come to life
So I just glue uh, the braid to the back of the brim of the of her hat. And so I also added a bit more uh, raffia just to give it more whimsical, airy look. And so then this is how uh, what I decided to do for the head. I have this larger Jenga block. These are tumbling tower blocks I get from Five Below. And so I am just going to Velcro that on there as well as the arms again. And that's why I said I was just thinking about, okay, how are you going to store this? So that's what I came up with. So we'll see how it works. All right. So then for the bottom uh, where the, uh, you know, feet would be, I'm just uh, tying off some raffia. Just put that in there and just tied some little bows around it. And oh my goodness, I'm so in love with this little girl. I tell you, I had thought about doing it one way and it actually came to be more <laughs> my envision became more expanded and I hope that you really really enjoy this project as well. Mm -hmm. 